What am I doing? I'm not a monster. I didn't want to do it. But it had to be done. Other people won't understand that, but I know you can. What else? After the jaw-dropping events of the first season, a lot of people are going into the second season with a lot of questions and expectations, but the highly anticipated animated superhero series has hit the ground running, with the first four episodes packed full of new and returning storylines and promising action. In Season 1, Nolan easily killed the original Guardians of the Globe with minimal effort. He easily destroyed his son, Mark, in battle. Please. During that, and in between, he kills thousands of people in very bloody ways. He also reveals his true objective on Earth, and the impending arrival and conquest of the Viltrumites. But then he has a last-minute repentance, giving up on his Viltrumite purpose out of love for his human family and his newfound affection for humanity. Going into Season 2, a lot of people don't know where they stand with his characterization. I've seen some interesting opinions on YouTube and other platforms, with some calling him a genocidal maniac and with others comparing him to a misunderstood anti-hero. What do you think? Are his actions a result of survival instincts or of unchecked power? The truth is that a lot of people died by his hand, and there's no debate that he was careless with life, if not maniacally murderous. And what were they doing with those fragile little lives anyway? In this video, we dive a bit into the mind and morality of our Crimson Killer. We may wander into some of the comic book stuff, but not to worry, we'll keep it as spoiler-free as possible. Omni-Man's resume reads like a superhero LinkedIn profile, member of the illustrious Guardians of the Globe, saviour of cities, and a superhero. On the surface, Omni-Man was the world's greatest defender and a charming father. But in truth, he was an enemy spy from a powerful extraterrestrial race sent to Earth to assess its potential for Viltrumite conquest. Nolan adopts a human identity and blends into Earth society, establishing himself as a superhero. He eventually marries a woman named Debbie and becomes the father of a half-human, half-Viltrumite son. However, as far as he was concerned, the world was his playground to roll out his Viltrumite campaign of planetary conquest. He actually lives a long human life as a normal superhero doing superhero stuff until that mask melts away and all of a sudden we could see the cold-blooded killer underneath. <laughs> That train scene was legitimately one of the most raw things that I've seen. It wasn't in the comics, so I didn't really see it coming. Just really heartless stuff. Here, Omni-Man begins to tell us who he is. Once I was old enough, I joined the war effort. It was hard, but I believe in our cause. Nolan has lived for thousands of years, and so will Mark. Most of the killing done by Omni-Man was to demonstrate the weakness of humans to Mark. They're cavemen without us. He really was trying to get Mark to see things from his perspective. In Viltrum, weakness was more than a good excuse to kill someone. In fact, you were doing them a favor. But Mark's endurance gets through to him. At the last second, he changes his mind, seemingly abandoning his centuries-old mission, but knowing that his relationship with his son and the planet has been fractured beyond repair. Now, the series is reintroducing Omni-Man, and on the hero's side for that matter, a lot of people don't really know where to place their expectations as to Omni-Man, and many don't believe there's a path to redemption. I do, and it's not just because I've read the comics. To understand Omni-Man, you have to go into his past as a Viltrumite war commander and his merciless upbringing. Viltrumites, much like humans, are a complex species. Their advanced technology and prolonged lifespans does not mix well with their hierarchical and authoritarian structure. They are a brutal, vicious race, living in a far crueler world. Their powers make them indestructible, and they can only be harmed by other Viltrumites or other powerful creatures. They achieved what they term a utopia by culling the weaker from their own numbers. Even among themselves, weakness was the worst crime possible, and was to be met with swift and messy death. So, just think about the brutality with which they approached lesser creatures. Every new world brought under their control was enslaved. Races who failed to submit to the Viltrumites were attacked and in some cases wiped from existence. 
The Viltrumites are an extremely proud and arrogant race. Due to their advancement and long lives, they simply do not recognize humanity's claim to personhood. We're as to them as pigs are to us, maybe even less than pigs. I personally could not wipe out a thousand pigs, we're closer to rats. That's the world Omni-Man is from. He quite literally calls his wife a pet. Before his brief stint as a human, that was his reality for thousands of years. So, when he started killing humans at the end of Season 1, it was like a hot knife through butter. He didn't have to dock his conscience or anything. He just pops them, like bugs. It's not murder to him, just pest control. <laughs> These people are meaningless. But not caring about human life is not an excuse for mowing down a city. It was what the humans call inhumane. However, I don't believe killing is all it takes to make a villain. Some household heroes have a surprisingly high kill count. For villainy, there has to be some intent to do evil, some cruelty or malice, some pleasure in creating suffering or some overall evil plan. For Nolan, there's none of this. In the end, he's a soldier following orders, and those kills were all to prove a point to Mark. The good thing is that, for perspective, there are real villains coming. Everyone is a genocidal maniac until the real genocidal maniacs step into the room. If they don't wipe out humanity, the Viltrum Empire will likely turn Earth into a breeding camp. Fans tend to compare Omni-Man with another super-powered freak, Homelander. On the other hand, Homelander probably licks his lips thinking about what Omni-Man did to that city, but there's no real malice or psychopathy involved in what he does like with Homelander. Homelander is the biggest and baddest of his world, and can do whatever he likes with no consequence. Omni-Man is not the biggest person in his world, and he's acutely aware of it. In fact, most of his actions are driven by fear of worse people, is a soldier fighting for his own survival, as failure among the Viltrumites means death. Otherwise, he's rather well behaved. Now, you guys may get mad at this, but the better parallel for Omni-Man and the Viltrumites are humans themselves. Humans very easily exploit animals for many reasons, and can be very violent and merciless towards them. Viltrumites, in their quest for dominance, treat us similarly. We are longer lived than most animals, and much smarter, and we often use that overwhelmingly against them. You may be thinking, oh well, animals don't feel pain or understand death, and I'm much smarter and obviously superior to a cow. Remember, that's exactly how the Viltrumites feel about us. I'm not saying humans are as bad as Viltrum, I'm saying a lot of it is due to perspective. And it's very easy to be cruel to others and cause a lot of damage when you think their lives are not worth a lot. How many did Nolan kill? Half a city? Quarter? We killed 200 million chickens every day. Humans send a new species to extinction every other day. Many insist that Nolan's season 1 actions are inhumane, and I agree but have always been in the camp that the entire point was that he wasn't human, and he wasn't raised human. It's a totally Viltrumite thing to do. It doesn't justify it, but it may provide some perspective on his actions moving forward. Why do I care about them? I don't understand! I'm not supposed to feel this way! So, is there a path to redemption for Omni-Man? I don't know. He spared Mark and he didn't enslave or destroy the world when he easily could have, I don't think he was fully redeemed in the comics either, and honestly, I don't think he needs to be fully heroic for us to root for him. I'm tired of perfect heroes anyway. Besides, we have Mark.